All right, so we're back again with another video here. And in this one, we're gonna be looking at how to create a multi-part form in React.js. So I was building a multi-part form or looking to build one and was looking around at different ways to do this. And most of the examples I saw were a bit um, more complicated than I necessarily needed. So this is gonna be kind of a dumbed down, simplified version of uh, how you might wanna accomplish this. Of course, this isn't the only way you can do it, but uh, it is my way and uh, take it or leave it. So I have right here a create, create React app uh, going, just kind of a blank one. This is my app.css. I've added a few styles here. And then I just have a blank app.js file over here. And the only other thing I have styling wise is in my index.js, I've added uh, the bootstrap uh, CDN just for a couple extra styles here. So without further ado, let's jump in and start coding here. So we're gonna come in here and the first thing that we're gonna to wanna to do here is come below the class name app div and in here, we're just gonna lay out uh, kind of a form. So we're gonna do a, kind of a sign up uh, form and we're just gonna have multi-part steps for that. So let's come in here and we're gonna do a form element and we don't need an action right now. And we can come in here inside the form and we're gonna have a few things. So let's start, we're gonna have a div and that is gonna have a class name of what and this is where the bootstrap styles will come in so the class name for this is just going to be form uh, dash group and this will just give us a little extra styling like i said and then inside this we're going to have a label and that label is we're not we're not going to work with any accessibility stuff or whatever right now um it's going to say email uh that's fine for that and below that, we're gonna have an input and that's gonna be of type uh, email, not type text. And then we're gonna have a few things as well on this. So we're gonna add a class name and that is gonna be equal to, uh, what is it, form control, uh, form dash control. And what else do we need here? We're gonna have a name this is going to be for our form elements. So this is going to be email and that is going to have an on change and that is going to be equal to, uh, and we're going to call this update form and we're going to create this function in a minute. So just hold on for that. And then we're going to have a value and that is going to be equal to form dot, uh, form dot, what is it? Email, of course and just go ahead and save this real quick. And we can actually, uh, we don't need this over here, so we can go full screen right now. So this is gonna be our input and these are gonna be uh, the elements on it. So that is good. And we're gonna go ahead and create, add some state to have a form.email and all of that sort of thing. So the next thing we're gonna do is we can actually just go in here and copy this down a couple more times. So let's copy two more of those and then we can just go in and change that. So the next one, we're gonna have an email. We're gonna have say a name here and we can change this to, this is just gonna be text. Again, a uh, name and one more time, name, boom. And then let's scroll down to this one and this is gonna be uh, a password. So we can go password. And again, here, here, and here, and we can go password. And that should be that. So let's actually open this up and just see if this shows up like this. So we'll do go yarn start and see what we get. All right, we're, so we're getting a lot of errors here because we have none of these things uh, defined. So let's actually go back and just start defining some of that. And let's first go ahead and just, let's create this update form. So come back up here. We can actually close this on the bottom, come back up and in here is where we're gonna want to create our update form component. So let's go const and we're gonna go update form 
we called it and that is equal. We're gonna do uh, an arrow function here. And then in here, we're gonna go set form, which we're gonna create in state um, in a second. And then in here, we're gonna spread in the current form elements. And then we're gonna go e.target.name. And then we're gonna go e.target.value. Okay, so that's good for that. Now what this is gonna do, as you can see, we have a name um, attribute here. So this is gonna link whichever input we're typing into to the value that's being passed in and set that to state. So let's go ahead and create the state also. So we can come in here and we're gonna be using use state for this. So we can go like this, we can go const and we go form, farm, no farm, form and set form. And then we're gonna go that is equal to use state, okay? And we're gonna wanna bring that in up here. So we can go like this, uh, up here. And we can go like that, sorry. Use state, good. And then in this use state, we're gonna create a few things. So we're gonna have an email, and that's gonna be just originally set to blank string. And we're gonna have a name, and that's the same thing and a password. And that's also gonna be an empty string. So we can go ahead and save that. Now, uh, with use state, you can do an object like this or you can just do a single uh, value. And of course, in this one, we're using an object, but you could do it either way, depending on what you wanna do. Okay, so that should take care of some of what we're looking for. Let's maybe save that and come back over and see uh, if we have more issues. And for a second there worked, and then E is not defined. So if we look here, we're not passing in the event. So if we pass in E, and of course we're using for E.target.name and E.target.value, so we have to pass it in as well. Okay, boom. Now let's go back and see. And here we go. We can type in here and we can type in here. Now, obviously we don't wanna show all these at once because we wanna do a multi-part form. So now let's go ahead and uh, implement that. All right, so back here and we're gonna look in our form. We're just gonna add a little bit of styling and a couple things right here. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do is just add a class name. So let's come in here and we'll go class name, and that's gonna be equal to what? We're gonna go call dash four, and this is just a bootstrap um, styling right here. And then we also added a form styling uh, of our own. And while we're here, we might as well add our on submit function. So let's go on submit, and then we're gonna do an arrow function in here, and we are gonna do an alert and open up um, some parentheses here and we're just gonna go back ticks and go submitted and we'll just display the values kind of just to show what we've uh, inputted into our form. So uh, we'll go dollar sign uh, curlies and we'll go form dot email and then here we'll go name and we'll go form dot uh, name and then the last one we will go what is it password obviously you would not want to uh, show your password but for demonstration purposes it should be fine so form dot form dot password okay and we can go ahead and save that come back over that all looks pretty good to me okay so now what we're gonna wanna do is be able to um, kind of mock showing different pages. So we wanna show basically our email input um, one at a time. So email, name, and then password, and then have some sort of next buttons. So let's actually come down and we're just gonna add uh, a couple buttons for uh, next and previous. So um, we'll do that 
first, but let's actually first come in and we need to do an on submit button. So we have our on submit function, but let's go uh, button. And then in here, uh, we're gonna have our, um, are on submit here. So let's uh, add a couple things. One is a class name, and this will just again be some styling, and I'll be btn btn dash primary. That's just bootstrap. Okay, and then we are also gonna have, uh, we gotta add the type, uh, which is equals submit, boom. And then in here, what should we call, we'll just say submit submit if I can spell. Okay, so that's good. And then we're gonna have two more buttons. So let's uh, we'll just copy this and then underneath the form, so not inside the form, but below this, let's come down. And in here, uh, let's just copy this over twice. And then we're just gonna change a couple things. So we're gonna go uh, styling wise, we'll go btn um, dash dark and btn dash uh, light. And we're gonna say for this top one, we're gonna go back and this is gonna go back in our form. And this one will go to our next uh, next item in the multi-part form. Okay, so now uh, what do we need to do? We need to have some sort of count to know which page we're on. So again, we can do this with state. So we're gonna go const and we will go count and set count. And again, that is equal to use uh, state. And we are just gonna start on number one. So the first page. Okay, so that is good. And then let's go and do that for our buttons to direct from each page. So on this back button, we're gonna want to be able to go back. So we can add an on click handler here just by going like this and we'll go on click and that is equal to, actually that's probably good. Let's go like this arrow function and we can set the count from here and we shall set that count to count and we'll go minus one. Okay, so that's good. And then we can even just copy this over because it's gonna be the exact same thing and come down to our next button, which will increase the count. And instead of count minus one, all we wanna do is go count plus one. Okay, so that I think is good. And then the other two things we're gonna to wanna to do is disable these buttons when, for the back button, the count's less than two. So if it's on the first page, you don't wanna be able to go back because there's nothing to go back to. So the property on a button you can use is disabled and that's gonna be equal to, we'll just go count is less than two. So when the count's less than two, this button will not do anything. And here, when the count is greater than two, so basically if it's at three and there's no more to go, it's not gonna do anything either. So that is great for those. And let's come back up. Okay, so now we're back up here and we are gonna just want to add some conditionals to show um, either the pages or not show the pages basically. So how do we do that? That's a good question. So we have our email address here. So we got our form group and we're gonna wanna come in here and open up some brackets. And you can't do any if statements or anything in JSX, but what you can do is some sort of conditional. So we're gonna do a ternary operation here so we're gonna go when the count is equal to one. So this is the first page only. And we are going to do our conditional here and open up some brackets and come down here. And this is where we are gonna show the email and make sure you come to here. And if it's not equal to one, we're just gonna show a, a null. Okay, and we're gonna do this the same for these next two. Only difference is gonna be the number. So let's come over and just see what that looks like right now. Right now, these are still showing, so that actually won't change anything. But when we go to the next one, it erases that top one because it's only a conditional for when it is one. Okay, and we can go back 
So let's finish up the other ones here. All right, so back here, we're just gonna wanna do the same thing. So we can just copy this over here and come below here and we can go count equals two and this is gonna show that and we just have to go um, like this, null, null and close off our brackets there, that's good. And then for this last one, we can do the same thing, just count equals three and come down below here and again, same thing, finish it off. And now when we come back, let's check it out. All right, so now we have our page here. So we got our email, we can type in our email, we can go next, we can type in here, it's got the name. All right, so a few issues that we might see here is we don't want to be able to submit a button unless it's this last one. So we're gonna hide this button also, and it might be good also to know which step we're on. So let's add those two things and then that should be about it for this app. So come back over and let's add those. So at the top here, just for us to know, uh, for the user to know which step they're on, we're just gonna come below this app here and let's just do an H1, we can tab that and we can go step and, uh, can't spell here, uh, step and we are gonna just put in the count and then we'll just go of, uh, off of three. So we have three total steps. The count will be the current count that we're on and that should work fine. If we come back over, step one of three, we add something, go next, step two of three, name, add something next, step three of three. All right, so that's good. Now let's get rid of this uh, submit button unless we're on the last, uh, last section there. So we can come down and we just want to go, those are not our submit ones, this button. So again, let's just add a count is equal to what? We have three steps, count is equal to three, then we'll show it. So count is equal to three, uh, question mark again, and we will go like this, come down, and otherwise, no. Okay, that should work fine. Come back over, check it out. And let's see. Let it refresh real quick. So now we have our email, no submit button right now, no back. We can uh, type something in here. Uh, test and next and name uh, Darwin. We can go back and it's still there. Next and it's still there. Uh, and then next again, and now we have our ability to submit after we uh, type in our password. Okay, so then if we hit submit uh, here, we can see it brings up our interpolated uh, string that we had before. So that's all good and then reset. So come back and I think, uh, yeah, that should be about it. So we'll come down, of course, uh, that looks good. Now there's just one way you can do this and another way you could create different components and pass the data around and props and that sort of thing. But I just thought this was kind of an easy solution. So if you're interested in doing a multi-part form, hopefully this was helpful for you. Um, yeah, if you liked the video, go ahead, subscribe or hit like uh, until the next one. Thanks for watching.